Welcome to Every Creature Commission Television and our program, The Keswick Convention Increasing, and your preacher, Brian Mason. There is a challenge from the throne of God that in these days of death or spiritual apostasy, where is that within the body of Christ which longed, where is the longing, the hungering and the thirsting after the Lord Jesus Christ himself instead of the selfishness, the inward looking, that which seeks to take from instead of giving to. That shall be the body of Christ which gives, gives all out to Christ that Christ himself can work through his body to the glory of God the Father. Let us start our meeting with the reading of Psalm 85. Lord, thou hast been favourable unto thy land, Thou hast brought back the captivity of Jacob. Thou hast forgiven the iniquity of thy people. Thou hast covered all their sin, Selah. Thou hast taken away all thy wrath. Thou hast turned thyself from the fierceness of thine anger. Turn us, O God of our salvation, and cause thine anger toward us to cease. Wilt thou be angry with us forever? Wilt thou draw out thine anger to all generations? Wilt thou not revive us again? that thy people may rejoice in thee. Show us thy mercy, O Lord, and grant us thy salvation. I will hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace unto his people and to his saints, but let them not turn again to folly. Surely his salvation is nigh. Them that fear him, that glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Yea, the Lord shall give that which is good, and our land shall yield their increase. Righteousness shall go before him and set us in the way of his steps. May the Lord add his own blessing unto the reading of his word. Father God, we lift our hearts unto thee in praise and in worship that thou art the God, the only God, the one who sits on the throne, the one who is the creator and sustainer of the whole universe, that in thy Son you provided that way unto thyself, that only way unto thyself, through the blood of thine own Son, thine only begotten Son, that through that one perfect offering for sin forever, those who come unto thee through repentance, those whose hearts are returned unto thyself, O God, that in, in Christ they find what a full salvation Everything is there, everything that
that you the Father has to give is being, has been given in Christ. And, O oh, Father God, stir up thy people, O oh, God, this, these days. Thy word here says, Wilt thou not revive us again? Those are your words, the Almighty God's words speaking through the psalmist, inspired words of God. And, O oh God, as thy word says, Wilt thou not revive us again? I say unto thee, Wilt thou not revive thy work once more? That thy people, what, may rejoice in thee, not rejoice in themselves, but rejoice in the God who is the Creator, the Father God, the one who is Abba Father, the one who has everything to give, but is giving in the spiritual blessings, not the material blessings of that which is sought in these days that goes under the name of Christianity. O oh, turn us, O oh God, once more unto thyself, that the body of Christ will see what it should be, surrendered entirely, surrendered to Christ, absolutely dependent upon thee, O oh God, and resting in thee, not coming up with the ideas of themselves, but taking hold of thee, and hearing from thee, and resting in thee, to see thee work in supernatural power once more, O God. And I challenge thee, O God, that thou wilt once more open the windows of heaven, and pour out such a blessing that cannot be contained, because, O oh God, you are far from finished. You are the one who started, and you are the one who will finish. And I command thee, O oh God, to move once more, and sweep aside all that stands in the way, that you and you alone will be the one who is at work, and that thy people will give themselves to be vessels, vessels in the hands of the Holy Spirit to work through them, to work through them to reveal Christ in all his loveliness and all his splendor and all his glory, that sinners will turn from their sin once more, being convicted by the Holy Spirit. And, O oh, Father God, I give it all to thee in expectancy that you have heard and you have answered already even before it is asked in the name of all other names, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, because he said whatsoever you ask. And what I've asked today is included in the whatsoever, so it must be. I thank thee and praise thee, O oh God, for the answer. Amen. Our hymn today is very much in line with what the Keswick Convention would have stood for when it started and what it stood for for many years. Because who was at the very center? It was Christ himself. Not, and the challenge which went out for a full and a complete entire surrender to God himself. And to see that there was victory over sin. Even the believer could know victory over sin because the victor lives in the believer, the overcomer himself, Christ, the one who has dealt with sin once and for all and has dealt with sin of the believer. When the believer is in Christ and sees that 
They have nothing of themselves, and Christ is everything. And have that abundant life in Christ, that glorious life in Christ, that fulfilling life in Christ, the joy and the peace of God. Nothing here of feeling sorry for themselves, but victorious in Christ himself, as Christ has all in all and is all in all to them. What a wonderful hymn this is. Man of sorrows, what a name for the Son of God who came. Ruined sinners to reclaim. Hallelujah, what a Savior. And that's what he came for, to reclaim out of the hand of the very devil himself those who were ruined sinners. And what a cost it was to him. Bearing shame and scoffing rude. In my place condemned he stood. Sealed my pardon with his blood. Hallelujah, what a saviour. Yes, there he was, the eternal Son of God. He left the glory of heaven and accepted humiliation and shame on our behalf. Yes, it was for, for us and for every sinner, even those who reject and will not repent. He accepted humiliation and shame, the very God of glory, the God of heaven himself. Guilty, vile, and helpless we, spotless Lamb of God was he. Full atonement can it be. Hallelujah. What a saviour. Can we take it in that we the condemn the guilty ones and he the spotless lamb of God that through his blood a full atonement, a full salvation he was the one who paid the price. Can we ever thank him enough have you thanked him today? We can never thank him enough in time or in eternity for what he is, who he is, what he's done, and what he still is to us. Moment by moment, he's everything to us. Lifted up was he to die. It is finished, was his cry. Now in heaven exalted high. Hallelujah, what a saviour. Yes, he was lifted up. But that cry, even though all hell, every devil, every, all the legions of hell have come against him and sought to prevent him going through with this, yet he cried, he was conqueror over them. Conqueror over every, every devil, every demon, every evil spirit. And he could say, it is finished. And let us keep that in mind. When those, there are many, so defeated. Defeated. Why? They're not looking. They don't understand that Christ himself said it is finished. And he's more than conqueror. And because when he lives in us, we are more than conquerors, because it is him, himself, who is the conqueror. And where is he now? He is risen. He is ascended and he is glorified. And he had to go to the glory. Yes, he had, if he had only been risen. But where did he ascend? He ascended to the right hand of the Father. And he took there what? He took our humanity there. He took our body. 
Yes, he took on himself the body of man. And there he is, the God-man in the glory, interceding for his body, the church. For every believer is interceding for at this moment. When he comes, what a glorious king, all is ransomed home to bring. Then anew this song we'll sing. Hallelujah! What a saviour! Are you singing that today? Hallelujah! What a saviour! And he is coming! Are you ready for his coming? The glorious King of Heaven is returning once more. And who is he returning? He's returning to the ransomed, those who be redeemed through his own blood. Have you been redeemed through the blood of Christ himself? Have you been redeemed by the blood of the eternal Son of God? Have you been born again into the kingdom of God? Woe betide of you not. Because the very devil will laugh at you. Have you spurned Christ? Have you rejected Christ? Oh, come and seek him whilst it is still day, whilst there is still that opportunity, because the night cometh, and the Saviour himself said that. When the things will be too late? Turn to Christ in repentance of your sin and receive a pardon from the only one who can bring you that pardon through the cleansing of his own blood, the blood of God himself. Today, we are starting a new study in the book of Galatians. a book which was written by the Apostle Paul himself. And why was it written? Because there were those who were Jewish Christians who had started teaching that a number of the Jewish laws and ceremonial practices had to be binding on Gentile believers. That could never be. And Paul knew that he had to explain that salvation is in Christ and Christ alone. It is a gift of God. It is not something that is earned for human flesh. In ourselves we can't earn salvation. That may be the teaching of much of Christianity today, but it's certainly not in line with the Word of God. It's certainly not in line with the errant Word of God. It's not in line with the inspired Word of God. It's not in line with the infallible word of God. Let us be so aware that in these days there is that need as in the days of the Keswick Convention all those years ago when it was founded to keep to what the unchanging word of God Justification by faith, not by works. Now, keeping that in mind, let us start our study. Paul, an apostle. Paul didn't have to go around advertising himself as an apostle 
all that Paul was doing. It was Christ in him and Christ through him. He didn't have to go like in these days wearing a badge saying Apostle X, Y, or Z. He didn't have to claim to be an apostle. He was known to be one. And that should be the same today. You don't, don't have to pay money to become an apostle. That is what? If you pay money to be an apostle, where does that come from? It's come from the very pit of hell itself. And there's nothing to do with the God of heaven. When someone is an apostle, a prophet, an evangelist, a pastor, a teacher, they don't have to go around saying, I'm this, that, or the other. It's the Holy Spirit working in and through that person. That person who is in full sur entire surrender, absolutely dependent upon God and is resting in God for God to do his own work through them, then it stands out. Because what? They're filled with the Spirit of God. Not with the human thinking. It's from the heart and not from the head. That which goes around advertising, I'm this, that and the other, is from the human head. Yes, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead. Yes, he knew where he stood, did Paul. Because he was called. Called by whom? The one who had given his very life for him. He did his utmost against the Lord Jesus and those who followed the Lord Jesus. But the day came when he was on that road to Damascus. And what happened? There was a light from the very glory of heaven itself. And the one who sits at the right hand of the majesty upon high, he was that glory, he was that light. And not only did he see that light, the glory and the splendor of our Lord Jesus Christ, he heard the voice from the glory too, had said about him kicking against the prick. Let us be careful in these days because there are so many who go under the name of Christianity, under the name of church, and what they're doing, they're doing what Paul did. They're kicking against the pricks. But Christ himself brought what? He brought Saul right down to see that there was a God in heaven, in, the, in Jesus Christ, the one who had ascended to the glory, the one who spoke to him. And he knew then that all that he'd been doing was as nothing. And from that moment he started to learn that he would become one who said, For me to live is Christ and to die is gain, rather than go around seeking to destroy those who belong to Christ. He was now one who belonged to Christ, not just believed in him, but belonged to Christ. Do you belong to Christ? Anyone can believe in Christ, the very devil, the every spirit out of hell can believe in Jesus Christ, but unless you belong to him. You're going to join those who are in the pit of hell itself, cut off from God forever. So he wrote, yes, he was Paul, writing to these churches in Galatia. And writing to whom? Writing to believers. This was a message which was going to the saved. 
a message of grace and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, yes, grace. Nothing to do with what? The greasy grace of the charismatic movement. No, this was grace from the very heart of God. The grace of God which spared not his son and gave everything that there was to be received, every spiritual blessing that there is to be received is in Christ. And verse 4, oh, what words these are. Yes, can we take them in? Who gave himself for our sins. Christ himself, the co-equal, co-existent one with the Father. E as equal with God and co-existent with God. The Father. No distinction there. Both God along with the Holy Spirit, the Spirit which comes from the Father. That Spirit, the Spirit that was in Christ and the Spirit that comes to indwell those who are Christ. Yes, we were without hope. The first Adam his wife, yes, Eve had been deceived. And because of that deception, man had gone away. He'd been cut off from a holy God. But yet Christ, here he is, God himself coming, the only begotten Son of the Father. And take note of that, because there are those Bible versions which will take away the word begotten. But he's the only begotten Son of God. Every bit God. You take, start taking words away like begotten, and an equal, a co-equal with God. What do you got? You've just got a man. No divinity. You have to have the God-man in Christ in order to redeem lost and guilty and already condemned sinners. And unless you have that, how then could he give himself for our sins if he was not God? Let us beware. There are so many deceivers around in these days. So many antichrists around in these days. Check your Bibles. Because you may be in the possession of an Antichrist Bible. I know they preach from the King James or Christ version. Because this is as near as you can get to the truth. Because it still stands that Christ is co-equal and co-existent. That there is still emphasis on the blood of Christ to cleanse sinners from sin. And there is still a warning that sinners, lost sinners, go to hell. And that the devil is the deceiver, the god of this world. And why did he come from the glory? Why did the eternal Son of God come from the glory? That he might deliver us from this present evil world. Yes, why is it this present evil world? Because it's what? It has a God of this world. The very devil himself. The deceiver. The arch enemy of God. But yet, there are so many who really are worshipping him. Yes, in days gone by, it would have been said, oh, there's nothing wrong in going to the dance. Nothing wrong in going to the public house. 
nothing wrong in going to the picture palace. But there are those in equivalents of today. In many ways, even worse than in the days of the 1950s or earlier. But there are two voices you will hear in life. The voice of the Holy Spirit seeking to draw you to Christ. And the voice of the very devil himself saying, Oh, there's nothing in that. Go ahead and do it. Have a good time in life. Enjoy yourself. But the time will come when the very devil will say, There's no more chance. Because, why? Because you sealed your own, your own self. You sealed, you've cut off Christ. Because the Holy Spirit, yes, will seek to draw you to Christ. Will seek to convict of sin, righteousness and judgment. But the day will come when that is no more. Because you have grieved the Holy Spirit, you have driven him away. Yes, I was hearing of a preacher no longer with us and so remarkable he was speaking so deeply about someone who what a lady had said this man said oh he, he couldn't come to Christ because he had sold himself to the devil 26 years earlier and the devil himself had said to this man, in 26 years you will come to, you will go to hell, you will come here with me. And what happened? 26 years afterwards, although this lady had tried to pray with him, tried to lead him to the Lord, he was cut off from the Lord, he couldn't repent. And he dropped dead 26 years later. It was fulfilled. Don't play around. With the Holy Spirit, don't play around with God. Because you can cut yourself off from God forever. Yes, he's a merciful God. He wouldn't be merciful if he hadn't provided his own son to take the wrath of sin upon him and deal with sin. But he comes, the Holy Spirit comes to draw and to show but when you grieve the Holy Spirit, you drive him away and he may never come again. Take your chance while you still have the chance to repent of your sin and take the Lord Jesus Christ as your Saviour. Take the cleansing of his blood. Nothing of, oh, I'm just sorry. Yes, I saw that the other day. Someone, yes, leading Somebody put in words into somebody's mouth. But there was no depth there. There was no re depth of repentance there. There was no conviction of sin there. That's what's needed in these days. Conviction of sin. Restore, almighty God, the conviction of sin in these days. Yes, according to the will of God and our Father, to whom what? Be glory forever and ever. Are we giving him the glory? Is the body of Christ giving God the glory? That's what he's called to do. Oh, in verse 6, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him. That called you into the grace of Christ. Unto another gospel. Yes, Paul had laid the foundations down. He'd showed them clearly. That they're saved by what? Faith. Not by works. Even Abraham. It was faith with Abraham. And Abraham was long before the law. But yet here were those who were wanting to impose the law. To fulfill the law upon Gentiles. 
when the Jews themselves couldn't come can fulfill the law. There was only one who could fulfill the law, and that's the eternal Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, there were those there who got in, called Gnostics, looking to add to the Word of God, looking to pervert the Gospel of Christ, Verse 8, but though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you. What, what strong words here? Let him be what? Let him be accursed. That's strong. You don't come any stronger. Yet there are those these days who seek to bring in another gospel. There are cults, and the Mormons are a prime example, adding to us, looking to add to Scripture, that which has been given by angels. It has never been given by angels, because the canon of God, the, the Word of God enclosed in the Bible, is inspired the Word of God. That which is said to come and be added to it is what? It is not inspired because it has not come through the Holy Spirit. And those who have been what? Deceived. And much of Christianity is under that which is a deception. The deception what of the Church of Rome with its works, with its emphasis on Mary and the saints. The deception of the Jesuits, the, Je the deception of the emerging church and the mega churches, seeking that which is of the self and not from the, from the throne of God, not through the Son. What does the Word of God say? When they're adding, they're seeking to bring in the ideas of men and they've brought in the ideas of men. It's every bit the same as Paul was seeking to say to the Galatians all those years ago. Yes, it may not be revelation, uh, as it were, it's been said to be brought from an angel, it can't be revelation because the angel's not bringing the revelation. The Holy Spirit had already brought the revelation in the Word of God. And those who seek to bring in their own ideas, bring in the ideas of philosophy, they're equally the same as Mormons, equally the same as Gnostics. They are accursed by God himself because the Word of God says so. And the Word of God is there to be believed and acted upon. So those who are accursed, let them repent of their sin before it is too late. Otherwise they will see, they will be in hell cut off from God forever. Yes, there we are. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? Much of Christianity is there as a show to, to please others. Those, yes, on, on platforms, there in the mega churches or wherever they be, but it's all to the self life. It's not to the glory of God. Because why? Christ is the example. Christ, the servant of God, having the heart, the servant heart of God within him. And what? Because Christ has the servant heart, then those who belong to Christ must have the servant heart. And Paul showed that he had the servant heart. And the servant heart doesn't seek to, to bring attention to themselves. It seeks to what? Bring attention to God in Christ. And then Paul speaks about his own authority of divine origin. 
Yes, he was called of God. He knew he had the Holy Spirit within him. He knew that of himself he was worth nothing. It had been a complete transformation in the life of Paul. Yes, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Not to live for the things of the world, not for the, to live for the things that are seen, but to live for the unseen world, to live for the, in the spiritual, because it is in the spiritual that the prayers of God's people are answered. They're answered first in the spirit, before they manifested, before our eyes. Faith takes hold, takes hold of God, and cannot be put off, and will not take no for an answer, because they're the prayers of the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit is in absolute full control of us, speaking as us, that this servant now is the Holy Spirit himself who has taken hold of him, has his way with him, speaks through him. And it was the same with Paul. And it's the same with everyone who is in Christ. Because it is the Spirit of Christ, the same Spirit of Christ, who is speaking through them. Not with the ideas of men, but the, uh, that are based on the Word of God. Biblical Christianity is there. It is still here. Yes, much of Christianity is done its utmost to try and wipe it out. But it will never be wiped out because God is still on the throne. And God has purposed that through His Word, will come that message to bring sinners to repentance to, and faith and cleansing in the blood of Christ to be brought to the Father, to be brought into the Father's house. Are you in the, do you know that you're in the Father's house? That place of many mansions, that place where a Christian has to live, has to live now in the heavenly places, not living brought down to the worldly level. For the world doesn't hold anything for those who are in Christ and those who have that longing, that hunger and that thirsting after Christ. Yes, Paul had received everything by revelation of Christ. Yes, he keeps a, tells a little bit about himself in verse 13. For we have heard, ye have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion. How that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it. Yes, he did his utmost to wipe it out. There were those today who were there most to try and wipe it out, but they would never wipe it out because they, they'd have to wipe out the Holy Spirit. And they, the Holy Spirit is God. The Holy Spirit is the first per, third person of God. He can't be wiped out. And as he dwells within those who are, belong to him, then he's not going to be wiped out. Furthermore, the church is persecuted, the more it will grow. And the lesson has not been learnt. There are still those who are seeking to wipe out Christians in different parts of the world, but they will never succeed because the, the more they the more they try and do it, the more that the, the Church of Christ will grow, the more there will be, there'll be more and more believers because Christ's blood was not shed in vain. It was shed so that sinners can have their sins forgiven. Oh, yes, there were no equals to Paul in his own religion. He was zealous of the traditions of the fathers. He was concerned with traditions. 
we in Christ are concerned or should be concerned with what? Christ himself. Exceedingly zealous. Have you got that zealousness within you? There are those fanatics of other religions have zealousness, but they've no message, they've no life. They've only death within them. It's Christ himself, his life within the, the Christian. Because Christ is life. Other religions are death. Yes, all that the body of Christ will see. Yes, the privileges it has. Oh, Father God, make the body of Christ zealous, as zealous as Paul was in his day. That those outside of Christ will see that those in Christ have something which is so different, something which is life and health and peace and joy. Oh, he was separated, yes. He was called by the grace of God. What to reveal his son in me. And that is it. To reveal the son of God through us. In us and through us. Not to betray ourselves. But to betray what? The life of God himself in Christ. Flowing out through us. Manifesting to a lost world. To a lost mankind. That there is a God who loves and cares and has given his son and has transformed those who accepted his son as their life. Those who accepted his son as their saviour, as their Lord, who have been cleansed by the cleansing power of the blood of the Son of God. Yes, Paul went off. He didn't confer with flesh or blood. He didn't go up to Jerusalem to the apostles. He went to Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. And this shows us how important it is that day by day, no matter how busy we may, may be, even those God knows about having to go out to work for so many hours a day. But what it is to be in Christ, to abide in Christ. And there are times when uh, to come aside, being refreshed, refreshed, because I know it's taking in. We, we can't give out. The Holy Spirit can't give out. We're, not, we're, we're constantly having to take in to give out. But we're not taking in to give out to ourselves. We're taking in to give out so the throat might be for the, for the glory of God. For the reaching of the body of Christ. For the reaching of the unbelievers. And it was after three years that Paul went up to Jerusalem. To see Peter. And he only stopped there 15 days. And he saw none of the other apostles. Apart from James the Lord's brother. Paul knew his calling was to the, to the then known world. And our calling in Christ is for those who as yet, no matter where they are in the world, have to be reached with the gospel. Not a message of death, not a religion of death, but a, a message of life. A life transforming life because the creator, the one who is life, is the one who is offering life. No other religion can offer life. Atheism can't offer you life. Secular humanism can't offer you life. Governments, political governments can't offer you life. Because what is in, in the natural is in the human. This is in the spiritual. It's in the supernatural. Because it's of God. It's from another world. Yes, here was Paul. As we're coming to the clause of our message today. 
Yes, he went. He'd been into other regions. And note here, one of the regions he's speaking about is Syria. Besides Cilicia, Syria. Yes, what is happening today in Syria? Yes, the devil is contesting there. But he will never win. He can't win. Because the more the body of Christ is come against, the more it will grow. Yet, there are those who come against it. They can't take this in. That the more they do to try and wipe out in Syria, they will never succeed. Because this is supernatural. It's a move of the Holy Spirit bringing souls to Christ because this is from heaven itself. The move of the Holy Spirit in Syria is from heaven. It is God. It is from God himself. And it's all for one purpose, for the glory of God alone. Yes, and was unknown by face unto the churches of Judea which were in Christ. But they had heard only that he which persecuted us in times past now preaches the faith which once he destroyed. Yes, look at the similarities here. Paul the persecutor. Yet he became, what? The greatest man. In the early church. And this parallel here is. Those who are out to destroy the church of God. Oh God almighty. Father God. May the Holy Spirit take hold. Of these persecutors against the church of Christ. And do the same to them. Which Christ himself who spoke from the glory to Paul, that they who are the perpetrators of death today will become the ones who will be so transformed that they will have the life of Christ within them. They will have the message of life to a dying world. Oh God, nothing is too hard for you. Nothing is beyond you. You are the almighty God. You are the sovereign God. And all these things are small to thee. Show thyself, O oh God, I challenge thee to take hold, of these take hold of persecutors and transform them by the blood of Christ. Bring them to repentance. Convict them of sin. That, Lord, the most evil in the world today is not beyond thyself. Because Christ died for the most evil in this world. Reach out to them in thy mercy, in thy love. And show them that there is a God who loves them, who cares for them and wants to be their father. And because of what Paul was doing here. This last verse. And they glorify God in me. Is that your prayer? That God will be glorified in you. And not just some of the time, but all the time, every day, every moment, that your life will be what a sweet-smelling Savior because it's the life of Christ manifesting out to a lost world. Manifesting out in the body of Christ. And then the body of Christ is in the position to hear from the head, hear from Christ himself by the Holy Spirit. And the life of the body, the life of Christ through the Holy Spirit is going out through the whole body of Christ to the glory of God, to the saving of souls, to the preparing of the body of Christ, the bride of Christ, to be presented Unto the Father without spot or without blemish to the glory of God the Father. I shall be back tomorrow at 2.30 British time with our program. 
the Protestant Reformation increasing. Good afternoon.